I'm here to review the Eclipse TD712Z Mark II speakers. Unboxing the 712s is probably the scariest unboxing I've ever done. In fact, a cold chill rang down my spine. My hands cooked up a sweat. My throat ran dry. My lips tasted of salt. Why? Because when I opened the box, a shiny egg spanning 285 by 411 by 285 millimeters sat inside. I knew then that if I made any sudden moves, a small alien creature would leap from within it, clamp itself over my face, whereupon it would implant itself inside my belly. And later, while I'm laughing and joking with my friends, a small stand mounted speaker would burst through the stomach lining of my tummy, look left and right and scuttle off towards my monoblock power amps. I wasn't going to fall for that one. Oh no. Which is why I left to have a stiff drink and then returned later, slightly numb, to lift the 11 kilograms of egg out of the box. All alien eggs weigh exactly 11 kilograms. You mark my words. It was after I'd seen the psychiatrist that I realised I'd been taking the wrong pills. I'd been taking the blue instead of the reds, so all was well. The whole thing is run by a powerful magnet and the reason the chassis is egg shaped is because doing that avoids any standing waves. The full range driver inside is suspended by a five armed structure. It's almost like a star shape called a stay, S-T-A-Y, and this allows the driver to almost hang within the chassis. And because the driver almost floats inside the egg shaped chassis, there's no vibration transference. Rigidity is another element of the design, and you'll find this in the uh, tight seal of the chassis enclosure, but also the all point contact between the chassis and the bespoke stand based upon strong metallic legs and a locking ring to create a stiff bond between the speaker and the stand itself. Within this area is what's called a mass anchor, which also reduces vibration. Don't think about buying a third party stand for the 712s. This speaker and the damped stand plus its isolation feet are quite literally made for each other. These are six ohm speakers and they have a sensitivity of around 84 decibels. So you'll need quite a sturdy, quite powerful amplifier to drive these speakers. Now, before we get to the sound tests, let me just show you the top of the stand and let's just have a brief close up chat about the stand and how it connects to the speaker itself. Now this is the stand obviously without the speaker connected to the top of it. So what happens is the speaker chassis sits on top of those three metal prongs. The prongs are rigid and don't move. That knobbly bit in the middle, that's the mass anchor. You add that as a separate piece. And let me show you an image of that separate piece. Once added, it screws into place. The speaker chassis slots onto all four of the protruding pieces and locks into place in a rigid fashion. For sound, I began with Nancy Wilson from the Capital EMI pressing of A Touch of Today from 1966. This album features a measure of compression. So while there's plenty of detail on offer, the upper mids are pushed right up to the edge. So any hi-fi component has to show real discipline and control if it doesn't want to produce a bright output here. There's plenty of work to do because the backing orchestra is packed with tonal variety. So this is a good test LP. I initially set up the speakers just towed in. When I say towed in, I mean angled towards my head. And basically I had the full range drivers not pointing directly at my ears, but just slightly outside, just sort of skimming past as it were. I was very surprised at the vast amount of air and space produced by these speakers. The soundstage seemed a large area indeed. 
I wouldn't call the 712s absolutely neutral though. Remember I mentioned that the Wilson track was pushed to the edge of brightness because of its own inherent mastering? A strictly neutral design would keep it there, rock solid. The 712 speakers eased the mids over the line to produce a stridency that was a touch on the brittle side. Now, I'm not declaring that the 712 speakers are a bright design. The Wilson track was ready to topple to that point at the slightest provocation. What I am saying is that the 712 speakers added a slight touch of edge to the overall presentation. Now, I don't know if you've ever used a software app like, say, Photoshop. And on Photoshop, if you've ever used that or something similar, you may have used a tool called Sharpness or a similar image enhancing tool. And when you add that particular tool, it gives the image concerned extra definition. That's what the 712s give to music. It just adds an extra definition. Now, if you've got a piece of music like I had on this Nancy Wilson track, which is right up against the boundaries of neutrality, it's going to take it over the edge. Now, this is obviously not a common factor in most music, but it's just something to be aware of. But for many of you, adding that slight mid-range enhancement will produce extra detail. It'll actually lift detail from the dark corners of a soundstage and bring those shy details out into the open. But that's not the end of the matter. I then rotated the 712 speakers further, increasing the degree of toe in. So the right speaker was actually firing past my left ear and the left speaker was firing past my right. So the sound, as it were, crossed over ahead of me, ahead of my nose, as it were. This was actually a recommended positioning for the 712 speakers and now I knew why. If pointed vaguely at your ears, the 712 speakers can tend to beam at you, adding a well-lit mid-range. With excess toe-in, the speakers calm down a lot. The result for the Eclipse speakers was a reduction in the air and the space, but also a much calmer and considered sonic output. There's still evidence of high definition etch to the overall sound that took the speakers slightly beyond the strict neutrality, but the behavior was far more civilized. I then turned to some very early prog by a band called T2. The album was called Work Out in Boomland and the track was called Morning. This track was less of a severe test on the 712 speakers. The music was more atypical of what an eclipse would face on a day-to-day -day basis. The mastering offered more of an average in terms of sonic boundaries and settings. When faced with a master of that type, the 712's preference to shine a light on the mids added more benefits than negatives. Hence, the lead guitar was superbly tracked in terms of the plucking of the strings. The manipulation of the same was also good, the bending and striking of the strings to produce additional effects. There was also enough space, not only in between each instrument, but also between each note to provide a wealth of intricate information. The sort of information that many other speakers might miss or smudge into an amorphous lump. Hence, the ability of the 712s to get right into the mix and to tease and package small and subtle details was one that wholly impressed me. And this is the core, I think, in sonic terms anyway, of the 712s. It's just the amount of room it provides for the music. The amount of room it allows for music to travel. So if you're a drummer and you hit a cymbal, the amount of room that is given to the reverb, that after effect, that decay, is very attractive indeed when listening to the 712s. And also that slight etch that the 712s give music added a bit of discipline to the mid-range and sort of kept the mid-range in check. So there was no smudging or smearing here on the mid-range. And same with bass, there was no blooming here. There was a sense of order right across the frequency spectrum. Vocals also benefited from this ultra focus. On this track, the fat was cut away and the essence of the voice 
was highlighted. There was nothing warming or bloated about the vocal delivery here. The emotive emphasis was quickly translated by the 712s. Now, the 712s are not for everybody. Those looking for a strictly neutral, strictly balanced pair of speakers probably should look elsewhere. But if you're looking to hear absolutely everything that's present on your vinyl disc, then I would recommend giving the 712s a long demo. If you're looking for a high definition presentation, if detail is your thing, then the 712s are definitely speakers you should be looking at. The 712s are perfect for those looking for a spacious soundstage, pace and precision. If you are looking for those things, then the Eclipse TD 712Z Mark IIs have all those ingredients in spades. And I did mention the price. Well, they're not cheap. You're looking at six and a half thousand pounds. That's six and a half thousand pounds for a pair of these speakers with the stands, let me add. And that's me done. Thank you for staying till the end. And until the next video, bye bye for now.